Now that students are familiar with equilibrium, let's work on writing equilibrium expressions. In general, writing equilibrium expressions means the concentration of the products raised to their coefficient divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to their coefficients. But the same inclusion rules as for rate expressions will apply. Aqueous materials, which are moving about in solution, will be included with their concentration in moles per liter. Solids that are at the bottom of the flask will have an activity of 1, so they will have no effect on equilibrium. Pure liquids also have an activity of 1. These may be a layer of oil on top of the solvent, or the solvent itself, which is not involved in the equilibrium reaction. Gas concentrations are included in the equilibrium either as the pressure of the gas or the concentration in mole per liter. So let's look at a typical reaction and try to write the equilibrium expression. We have magnesium solid with two moles of hydronium ions that are aqueous in equilibrium with magnesium ions, which are aqueous, two moles of water, which are our solvent, and hydrogen gas. First, let's start with our products. Initially, you might believe that this is magnesium 2 plus to the first power, water squared, and hydrogen to the first power. On the bottom, we could have magnesium to the first power and hydronium squared. But keep in mind that only aqueous and gaseous materials are included in the equilibrium expression. So goodbye to our liquid water and goodbye to magnesium solid. This is the equilibrium expression for this particular reaction. Here is your student question. We have H2S in the gas phase and oxygen in the gas phase in equilibrium with sulfur dioxide in the gas phase and two moles of water in the liquid phase. What is the equilibrium expression for this reaction? Here is a question that draws on some of your earlier Chem 102 labs. And just in case you're having trouble remembering, let's think about what happens to a solid when we write the dissolution reaction in water. Ionic compounds will break apart. For the cation, I hope you can see that this would be calcium 2 plus. And I hope you also notice there are three of them. For the anion, this would be the phosphate ion, which is polyatomic. So you might need to think back to your charges. And once again, I hope you notice the stoichiometry. There is a subscript of two on the phosphate. So we need to have two phosphate ions in our product. Please identify the equilibrium expression for this reaction. Here is a sample of how you can do calculations using equilibrium reactions. If we are given the equilibrium value for this reaction as 7.5 times 10 to the minus fifth, what is the calcium ion concentration that exists in equilibrium with hydronium, which is 0.23 molar, and hydrofluoric acid, which is 0.88 molar? This might be a situation where we cannot measure the calcium 2 plus ion directly, but we can measure the strong acid and the weak acid. First, we should write our equilibrium expression. So that would be products over reactants raised to their coefficient. The calcium 2 plus ion will be to the first power. Hydrofluoric acid will be squared. We will ignore the water as solvent. This hydronium ion we will include as squared but we're not going to worry about the calcium fluoride solid still sitting in the bottom of the flask. Now we should rearrange this to get calcium 2 plus isolated on just one side. There we go. Now this is just a matter of substituting our values. We know K, we know the hydronium concentration, and we know the hydrofluoric acid concentration. Our calcium 2 plus ion concentration is 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6th molar. 
Here is your student question. We want to know what is the equilibrium concentration of the chloride ion in a 1 liter solution that is 0 0.110 molar in lead ion and the solution also contains 0 0.230 moles of lead chloride. First, we should write the equilibrium expression. Now, we should rearrange this so that chloride ion is isolated on one side. The chloride ion is still squared, so to get rid of that, we need to take the square root of both sides. Now, this is just a matter of substituting in our values. We have a value for K. We also have a value for lead 2 plus ion. Maybe you're wondering, what am I supposed to do with the 0 0.230 moles of lead chloride? Ignore it. This is a solid, so it's not part of the equilibrium calculation. Here is another student question for you. This time you're being asked to calculate the equilibrium constant, and you're given the concentration of the items in solution. So once again, let's write our equilibrium expression. So now all you need to do is substitute the numbers for the concentrations. Here is a summary for you of how reaction coordinate diagrams are related to K equilibrium. Remember to think about these reaction coordinate diagrams as a balance or scale. If we were to start with 10 molecules of reactant material, how would they distribute themselves at equilibrium? Remember that the low energy side is favored. So for our top diagram, we might have 80% of our material as reactant and 20% as product. This is a diagram that has mostly reactant. We would call this a non-extensive reaction, and the equilibrium constant is less than 1. For our middle diagram, it would distribute 50-50. K would be equal to 1. For our bottom diagram, it might distribute 20% reactant, 80% product. K would be greater than 1 for this diagram, and be extensive with mostly product forming at equilibrium. Here's a question that sometimes confuses students. If the initial reactant concentration is one molar, which diagram represents product at approximately one molar at equilibrium? I'm going to remind you of ice tables to help solve this. Remember when you're working with equilibrium that if you start with a particular amount of material, like one molar, it will distribute itself between reactant and product at equilibrium. So essentially this reaction with all reactant needs to go forward. So this concentration at equilibrium will be whatever one molar is minus x, and this concentration will be x. What we are looking for at equilibrium is the reaction that distributes itself such that most of the reactant is converted into product. Which one of these diagrams says to you, when I start with reactant, convert most of it to product? This concludes equilibrium. Stay tuned for the next lecture on Le Chatelier's Principle.